We are all about saving money and we love having backyard chickens. However, that is not who I want to spend all my money on. Well, I mean, I've got daughters. So we're going to show you five amazing ways to save money and lessen those feed bills with your backyard chickens. And as a bonus, we're going to show you how to do a small scale regenerative agricultural system in your own backyard. Stick around. We moved off our farm a couple years ago and one of the things I will admit I miss is looking out there, seeing the hens, scratching through fresh pasture, spreading the cow patties, picking up the grasshoppers and all the other little creepy crawlies out there, all while sanitizing your pasture, leaving their own little blend of fertilizer behind and producing the great little golden eggs of deliciousness that we come to love about our laying hens. During that time, we constantly moved the birds around behind the cows and with them being moved on the fresh grass on an almost daily to every other day basis, our feed bill was actually pretty modest for about 60 to 80 laying hens. Why did our hens need less feed while they were out on pasture? Well, they supplemented their food with the things they could scratch out, literally. So here we are. You don't have a farm, you don't have acreage, but you want those backyard chickens, but there's some concern over how you're gonna feed them without breaking the bank. You, like us, want the best quality, highest nutritional value eggs, but let's face it, the prices on that organic, non-soy, non-GMO feed that you get at your local feed store give you a sticker shock every time you go buy them. But you're not willing to compromise. Because you've probably been compromising all along the way when it comes to food. But not today, not this time. This is our line in the sand. Today we say no more. When it comes to our eggs, at least, because there are some really easy tricks to make that feed bag last a little longer. Starting off with number five, grass clippings. Let's assume for a second that you already have your chickens and you've built their confined structure with safety and hygiene in mind. Chickens need good airflow, they need protection from the weather, and they need protection from predation. Because we're not the only ones out there that like a good chicken nugget. You live in a neighborhood and you have land restrictions, but I would venture to say that you have a yard that needs to be mowed or maintained on a regular basis. We live in the south and from March to November, our yard has to be cut probably about once a week. Rather than letting all that grass go to waste, we use it to benefit our chickens in two ways. First and foremost, our hens love fresh grass brought to their run. They immediately go to work scratching through it and eating. I know this isn't a popular thing to say, but no matter what your food choices are, your chickens are not vegetarians. If you handle a big shovel full of grass and there's a cricket, a grasshopper, or any other creepy crawly things out there, that salad bar is completely ignored until every bug is efficiently picked out of that pile. And then and only then will your ladies return to that salad bar. We get our grass clippings the old fashioned way with a real mower. Not like a real mower, but like a real mower. You know, the old timey one. So when my dad starts telling my girls about how you would earn pocket change by mowing yards using a real mower back in the 60s, They'll have an appreciation for things like that and a few stories of their own about how they had to walk to school uphill in the snow both ways. Now when they grow up and leave, I'll probably do it the efficient way and give me a bagger for my mower, but until then I will promote physical health through manual labor. At the beginning I told you I'd be adding in some scalable regenerative agricultural practices and this is the first step. Whether you intended for it or not, if you have chickens in confinement in your backyard, you already have a compost generating machine. How you manage that machine is directly reflected in the smell it gives off. If you have a pungent or foul smelling coop and run, then chances are it's not the healthiest environment for your hens and it's not a healthy environment for you. When you add the grass clippings, it's not only a supplementation to their diet, but it's also a carbon layer to soak up all those little nitrogen deposits that hens often leave behind. In an enclosed compost bin, clippings are a good source of nitrogen. But when you put them in your chicken run and your hens naturally spread out everything that they don't eat, it dries out very quickly because it's in that well-ventilated area that we talked about earlier. And because of this, it's a great source of adding carbon to your chicken run. Having enough carbon in your chicken run will help absorb all that manure and it'll decrease any odors that a lot of mismanaged coops will have. Adding carbon brings us to our next tip on how to reduce your feed bill. Number four, leaves. 
Now, whether it is your trees losing uh, their leaves in the fall or you're trimming back some of your trees during the spring or summer, leaves are always a good input for your chicken run. We rake up our pecan and our oak leaves and instead of bagging them up for the trash guy to pick up, we have a place for them here, whether it's in the garden, in the compost, or in the chicken run. Live leaves fresh off the tree from trimming are a great addition to the run. Uh, they'll snack on the fresh leaves and uh, you might be thinking to yourself right now, well, what about the dead leaves? What good is adding a bunch of dead leaves to my coop or run really gonna do? Well, I'll go back to an earlier statement. Your chickens do not really appreciate a vegan diet. Believe it or not, but mixed up in all those leaves, there's a whole lot of little creepy crawlies that end up making their way in there. And your chickens do a pretty efficient job of picking through all that and finding every single one of them. Meanwhile, what are they doing? They spread all the leaves. If you just picked up on the importance of a continual supply of bedding for your chickens, then you're picking up what I'm putting down, so to speak. We believe in a deep litter for not only the coop, but also for the run. I feel like I'm not just talking to the chicken enthusiasts out there. I'm also talking to the backyard homesteaders or the people that want to bring regenerative agricultural practices on a small scale to their own backyard. So they're not just always a consumer in the traditional practices. So I say all this trying to get to a point. All your backyard homestead ventures should be part of a master planned symbiotic relationship so that everything is feeding the next thing and in turn is feeding back into itself. The deep litter is not just a, a way of keeping the smells down. It's a living composter that is worked and managed by a workforce that is more than happy to do what needs to be done. And they often pay you, often daily, with fresh eggs. So what do you do with all that compost? Well, if you're thinking about starting a backyard homestead, a garden is your next order of business. And there's really no better growing medium than amazing compost from your chicken run. Which brings us to number three on how to lower that feed bill. Number three, garden scraps. You don't have a garden? Start one. Even if it's a small garden where you're only growing a few things or you're just growing your favorite fruits and veggies out of containers, I encourage you, go ahead, just start one. I mean, you're going to have an abundance of great compost already from your chicken run. You remember all those grass clippings and leaves you left behind? And out of that garden, you're gonna have scraps. Maybe it was the tomato that didn't quite turn out the way you wanted to and it wasn't fit for your table or the entire cucumber plant that's uh, past its prime. You're always going to have things going in and coming out of the garden. All of these items will be welcomed with open wings and be the main course as soon as you put them in the chicken run. The experts say that onions and hot peppers should make their way to your chickens, but not gonna lie, sometimes they do. And our girls are voracious eaters and they pick and scratch through pretty much everything they want and don't want. And the things they don't want, guess what? It becomes compost. So what happens to all that produce from the garden that is fit for human consumption? Well, that brings us to number two on our tips to lower your feed bill. Number two, kitchen scraps. Now I know I'm not the only one out there that has that tomato that I had every intention on putting on my sandwich, but two weeks later it's sitting on the counter, shriveled up and looking pretty poor. Or those strawberries that you cut up, what do you do with the tops? Leftover lettuce or baby spinach that maybe been in the fridge too long? I mean, I know we're not the only household that has produce that goes a little bit too long that would otherwise be destined for the landfill. There's no reason to have a lot of food waste, especially if it's produce that maybe is a little past its prime. You have an eager flock that would be more than willing to take that kitchen fare, and you would think it was prepared by Chef Gordon Ramsay himself the way they'd go after it. I could get into an exhaustive list of the do's and don'ts of what to feed your chickens out of your kitchen. Um, there's a lot of lists that already exist, and I'll link one below. And finally, the number one way to reduce the cost to feed your chickens and it almost sounds ridiculous saying it out loud. It's to stretch out the feed that you already have. How do you do that? The number one way, ferment your feed. I put this as a number one because if you've already implemented all the other steps, you're already saving a ton of money on your chicken feed because their needs are being met with all those inputs that you're putting in from your grass clippings, the leaves, the kitchen scraps, the garden. So fermenting feed is kind of one of those last things that you can do if you really want to make that feed last. Why should you ferment your feed? 
Well, there's two main reasons, and let's back up and say the main reason you're here isn't for budgetary reasons. Fermented feed has several health benefits for your flock. By soaking the feed, you are releasing the nutrients of that feed, and they're easier to digest for your birds, so their nutritional needs are being met by less feed. Um, some people say that you can reduce your feed by half. I haven't really put pen to paper on that just yet because we implement so many other ways of supplementing our chickens feed as it is. So within that first reason comes the second reason. Obviously if it's more digestible and they're getting those nutritional requirements with less feed, you'll have less feed that you'll have to be putting out every day to get the same egg production that you've come accustomed to. There isn't any additional composting value to this step. It's really just to make that organic, non-GMO, non-soy, expensive feed that you get from the feed store last much longer and to keep things from filling up those landfills. We don't want to spend any more money than we have to for our eggs. And after getting back from the grocery store and seeing the price of a dozen eggs, I love the value and the cost of my homegrown eggs. While this is in no way an exhaustive list on how to cut your feed bill, it's a great starting point for a backyard homesteader or someone that's wanting to get into backyard chickens that still has that full-time job or band practice or football practice, soccer practice, or any of the other number of obligations that we find ourselves committed to. I'm definitely not one to sit around with a tinfoil hat and research the latest conspiracy theories. I don't have to. All I have to do is go to the local grocery store and see the prices of our stapled goods going up consistently. And why do I want to spend my money on those things as that price increases when I can do it here for less money and enjoy the whole process of creating and sustaining my own food sources. My hope is to give a little bit of insight and a ton of encouragement to anybody out there that is willing to be the odd one in the group. You can do this. And if you take a breath and you plan out the how and the why, then owning and managing a backyard flock will not only provide you an abundance of delicious eggs, but it'll also give you an avenue for family time, exercise, and hours of enjoyment watching your little backyard raptors. Thanks for watching, and I hope in some way that this was a level of encouragement or insight, and if it was, then go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit the like, and if you have any comments or questions, put them below, and we'll be more than happy to answer them as we go.